Welcome to session eight of European Entrepreneurship and Innovation at Stanford Engineering School. Today is March 12th, the final day of winter quarter for this class. My name is Burton Lee, I'm the course instructor. Welcome to you all. Today we're featuring a very unusual, interesting session on Kosovo, Albania, and Germany. Uh, special and unusual because this is our first startup out of Kosovo, Albania. We're going to be hearing about the Albanian diaspora, the emerging Albanian community uh, in Europe, coming out of the heart of the Balkans. And also uh, one of leading Germany's leading startups, not from Berlin, it's our first Munich-based startup, uh, also a spin out from the Technical University of Munich. So uh, it's an interesting contrast between two of Europe's richest and poorest regions and a great example of what entrepreneurs are doing to transform their economies and cultures and societies in their respective regions. Uh, as I mentioned, this is the eighth session of year nine of European Entrepreneurship and Innovation. Uh, our speakers today are Pierre Gourdin, who is CEO USA uh, of Flixbus, formerly head of Flixbus France, was in charge of expanding Flixbus into France uh, over two years. And our second speaker, who will actually be presenting first, is Mirgam Kahani, who is founder and CEO of uh, Girafa, based in Kosovo, but also with ties and teams in Albania, as our first Kosovar Albanian speaker and startup as well. We never talked about how you chose the name Girafa, Mirgam. Um, it's an honor to have you. Thank, you. thank you for flying all this way. Let's give a hand to Mirgam. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's such an honor to be here with you today. Uh, Professor Lee, thank you for the invitation. Uh, it's a pleasure to present what we have to show today about Girafa. You, your question, the name, actually Girafa means just like the animal giraffe. You might have guessed it. Uh, we picked it because I, we think it's an awesome animal. But what's more unique about Girafa, it's actually if you look at through evolution, mammals, giraffe probably stands out because it has evolved the best throughout all other mammals. And we like to take that as a core value of our team because we are an industry that changes so quickly and we like to be so adept and agile in our environment. So that was the name of, of giraffe. I'm Mergam Tsahani, I'm the founder and CEO of giraffe. And um, giraffe, we at giraffe are working towards building the internet economy in the Balkans. That's what we're trying to do. And that's what we are doing. Before we get into our services and our products and how we have done that and how far we have come, I would briefly just like to speak about the region, the Balkans, which I will use throughout the presentation as, as a synonym. Um, we look at it from two quick perspectives. First one is as a market. And the second piece is we're gonna look at it on the short term history for the past two, three decades. Professor Lee mentioned earlier some of the challenges of this region. And I'm going to look at it on the past 20 to 25 years. I'm not going to go too far deep into history. I'm going to just share with you one example of what this region has come through in hopes that that contrast, contrast will give a little bit more meaning to what this region is doing, especially in the internet services area. So 20, 25 years ago, I was a high school student um, between 94 and 98. And um, we had clandestine schooling system. So it was improvised. We didn't have actual school objects. We didn't have books. We didn't have literature. We only had notes. And we actually had to go to the school. The professor will dictate. We will write down. That's how we study. We didn't have desks. We didn't have chairs. We even didn't have heaters. It was cold. We were wearing three pairs of socks in the private houses, people's rooms. It was cold. Mind you, this is not California there. It's cold. It's not Siberia either but it's cold. So that's history not even too long ago in my lifetime. And coming from that area and showing what we have done and what others have done. Remember, this is the region where Mother Teresa came from. This is the region where we have an Olympic gold medal winner. This is the region of Rita Ora, Dua Lipa. So this region has progressed in such a quick time that uh, we are very proud of what we're doing there. The second perspective in terms of consumers and market um, the Balkans has our, our primary market in red, our Kosovo, Albania, Macedonia, Montenegro. It's about 7 million people, 4.5 of which are active internet users. That's our primary market. But we also have Albanian-speaking community worldwide. 
which in total is about 12 million speaking people. That's our customer base, that's what we do serve. So we are the fastest growing tech startup in the region. Uh, for any uh, business students and others, we have 985 compound annual growth for the past two years. And no, we did not start counting from zero. That's why it's two years, because we operate for three and a half years. And we primarily offer search. We are very good in vertical search. Um, we are better than Google in this region for vertical search. We offer e-commerce. And we also offer content, primarily streaming, local TV content. Think Hulu, YouTube, and Netflix is a combination of those. And we have a fourth segment. We connect offline to online uh, uh, world. The reason we are able to thrive in such area is because the tech global giants have actually neglected, neglected the region. They have neglected it for many years. Actually, I can, I can just picture it. I'm improvising here, simplifying, oversimplifying probably. They have an Excel sheet doing their global expansion strategy and they have the columns and they have population and GDP per capita, some other indicators. Order descending, these countries don't show up. So this region has been neglected for so many services that we take for granted in developed economies that we found an area to fill it. And we do the most or comparable technologies as those companies do here in America or West Europe. In here we have some samples of we do our own street view, our own camera, our own cars. We do our own maps combination with open street view with our own, our own layers. So <clears throat> I think it's important because this, this is kind of conflicting. If, if big tech players are neglecting the region because it's small, why would anybody want to do something in such a small region? region? What was the business sense on that area? And we learned the best from some other successful regional companies globally. We look at Cessnam in Czech Republic, 10.5 billion people. They are the Google of Czech Republic. We look at Yahoo Japan. We look at my favorite neighbor in South Korea, which does pretty good. And we also have Yandex in Russia and now in, in Turkey. So by looking at these companies, we can actually draw examples and lessons on how to actually grow in the Balkans. Um, so if we have companies who are successful in geographically niche focus areas with multiple services, then why focus in Balkans? Well, Bal Balkans is like a hidden gem and our premise is the only place in Europe that has a potential for exponential growth in Europe it's, that is left, it's Balkans, that's one. Two, the market is much bigger than it seems. It, the macroeconomic data don't actually capture the whole story. They don't tell the whole story because of the culture. They don't tell you the purchasing power. If you look at it, they even don't exist that data. If they do, they are not always correct. And the third piece is <coughs> perception is worse than, than the reality. A few weeks ago, I was talking to Professor Lee about this. New York Times pulled up uh, an article. You can find it just a few weeks ago and says, not maybe the worst hotel in the world, but then again, the world is big, featuring one of the hotels in Pristina in Kosovo. So true, it's not the most beautiful hotel. It's not from socialist era. And socialism, we know it's pretty good until you run out of the money that you spent other people's money. <laughs> but just across the street from that hotel, it's a five-star hotel that's probably one of the top 20 or 30 in Europe, just across the street from it. So the picture is not really portraying the reality and the, the negative news actually do take more tractions than what it, what it is actually there. Um, how the story started, um, I lived in uh, New York for about 12 years. I went to school there, I worked for a few companies and um, I was flying back to visit my family in Kosovo and I was going roughly speaking every 18 months on average, staying for about two weeks. And uh, before I decided to return back, I'm, I'm staying at my house with my family around 10 p.m. And I, I say, I really feel like eating pizza. Can I order pizza online? I knew that there was no online service, but it just came out. And the look on my father's eyes was so absurd, as in, how could you ask that question? I think it was that look. It wasn't that the answer, no, you cannot. It was the look on his face, as in, are you crazy what are you ask? And as if I asked you, in what, what building is the time machine? <laughs> so <clears throat> that absurdity on that look 
really gave me the certainty and the confidence to actually quit everything that I was doing in the States, take my 401k out, take my 403b out, and just sell everything, sell my car, my, all everything that I had. I just kept my books and went back to do this. We started doing this. I started doing this on my own. We failed in 2013. It was a disaster. I thought I could do everything on my own. Our premise problem definition was wrong. Then we came up to learn to expand that problem definition. The main problem was we used to think that Google doesn't do a good job in Albanian search. While that's true, even today, Google doesn't support Albanian, especially for advertising. Actually, it was because you cannot find something that doesn't exist online. And that was the bigger problem. So, so digitalizing the region became our first priority that we had to learn. We relaunched in October 2014, and ever since, we have grown in, in big numbers. I'm, I'm going to show you in a little bit. So some of the products, we have categorized them in four, in four pillars, four groups. We have e-commerce. Um, think Giraffe Mall is like Amazon seller, like e-market marketplace, e-commerce marketplace. Giraffe 50 in Kosovo and Albania does electronics only. It's a product that when we launched in 2016 to now, we have grown about 11 times. What we sold then in a month, we sell now in a two, three days. Um, then we have Giraffe Video, it's our streaming platform. We have our own content, we produce our own shows. Um, we have our own small improvised studio as we speak. We have live TV in there, thank you to Bread. And we do that especially for that region. Uh, we have online marketing, as I said, we have search, we do that very good. We have certain publications in the Albanian language, NLP processing and peer reviewed journals. And um, we also have Giraffe Ad Network that owns 50% of the online marketing in that region. Um, again, Google AdSense doesn't work in Albanian language pages. So we fill that niche and that gap. And the, the last one is where we try to connect offline to online. That includes maps, street views, business directory, booking very soon, car rentals and deliveries. And I can order that pizza very soon. Um, and we also have bus schedules, so it could be interesting to see what we're going to do with Flexbus. <coughs> we also seen that, again, to remind you, our vision is to build the internet economy in this region, actually becoming the internet economy in this region. So the, the challenge is you cannot do everything. I mean, you can. You'll become a Swiss knife that has a lot of things and none of them works right. So we decided to open a branch or a, a, a segment called Giraffe Lab that is a small many fund accelerator. We have already done one investment at Tracondi, who does its fintech app. And we are working in two, three others to look that primarily solve problems for that region. Some of our investors that we have, um, the lead investor is Rockaway Capital. We also have Credo Ventures. They have a presence in San Francisco as well. They are very big in Europe. Uh, Rockaway Capital leads e-commerce in CEE, has over 30 companies on their portfolio. <laughs> but we also have some very reputable US investors, including Esther Dyson. I believe most of you might have heard of her, top 10 most influential woman in technology, named by the Time Magazine, one of the early investors in a lot of startups. Um, we have the managing director, former managing director of JP Morgan and State Street, um, and a few names that really allow us to push us further. Here are some of the numbers in terms of uh, growth. It seems that three products listed here, giraffa.com search, giraffa50, our electronics e-commerce, as well as our giraffa video. It seems that almost every product that we create, it just takes off and, and works for it. And I'm gonna share now a quick story on giraffa50. Um, in November 2016, <coughs> we didn't have e-commerce. I go to the board, speak to the investors, and I'm like, look, this market, needs e-commerce. Amazon doesn't really deliver. Amazon selectively delivers in Albania. AliExpress and Alibaba takes more than six weeks to deliver. So we think we can really make this happen. They didn't believe in us. They said the market is not mature enough. Uh, behavior doesn't exist. You can't create that. So we said, you know what? We're going to do a pilot. Within less than a month, I think it was three weeks, we created a web site without categories, without anything. It was like a flash e-commerce site. We handpicked 50 electronic products, some cell phones, some laptops, some cameras, some 
hard drives, and we decided to put those up. We bought them with our own money in Czech Republic, in Prague. We imported them. We kept them in our office, in our warehouse. And within a week, we sold 70% of the stock. After that, the investors and the board was convinced. We relaunched full e-commerce in March 2017. At that time, 24,000 unique SKUs, unique products. And ever since, we have been growing massively month to month. Um, <coughs> and uh, it's not that we are doubling or tripling our users. While we are doubling and tripling the users, we are actually doing upsell. The average order value grows. The average order of sales grows. So multi-dimensional exponential growth across different variables, something that is hard to see in any mature market. So we think, again, going to our promise, premise that Balkans is the only area in, Balka, in Europe left for exponential growth, these numbers actually do support that claim. <coughs> going back to uh, um, the compound annual growth rate, we did some research and we found an article at TechCrunch which has analyzed the companies who have done IPO and they have analyzed their growth before they went IPO and the companies that generate up to 25 million, the top 25th percentile has grown around 160%. The average was about 130. And our growth on that range is about 984. Our projected revenues for the next five years, at minimum, double this trend here. Our vision is by 2022 to be listed at NASDAQ. By the way, we are a US company, registered in US, operate there as a branch in Kosovo. So this kind of growth, it's what really drives us, improves the market. I have some photos here of our uh, um, street view, and this was interesting. I put these up because when this came out, people were thinking Google came in, and because Google is not there with street view. So when people saw a Mercedes, they're like, oh, hold on a second, Google doesn't have Mercedes. <laughs> so we got a Mercedes, and obviously we didn't pay for it. But the Mercedes actually sponsored this, local Mercedes dealer sponsored this and gave us the car for free. We did the same thing in Albania. We covered 90% of Kosovo. We are in the process of covering Albania as we speak. And, uh, <coughs> and here we have some other photos of the team. The one on the upper left is when we initially opened the office at 17 people. Uh, we could barely squeeze in. So, Mirga, yeah. could you just go back to Street View? Yeah. So, uh, who developed this technology? So the camera, we bought it. We developed it in our end. Some of the stitching software for tech people in here, we use some open source. So this is totally locally developed technology in Kosovo? Every single, by your team? Every single product, it's in, not off the shelf. We have built it in-house. Okay. Even our video streaming service, uh, which can handle millions of viewers. We have the whole full infrastructure and scale that server farms that we have built uh, inside Kosovo and Albania, but also through different hostings around Europe and US. So if you go to Giraffa Video from US, you're gonna be accessing cash service in the United States. Everything is in, in built in-house. All these products were done with a total amount of three point something million dollars for the past three and a half years. Um, By a team of how many engineers? We are right now 86 people in total, 26 engineers. The Street View team was how large? Well, we, we don't have people in teams, we share them. So 26 developers are in, in total. Okay. During the full focus for a few months in Street View, it was probably 12 engineers okay. for a couple of months. And um, uh, we have some very impressive teams, uh, team members uh, in, the, in the company. And one thing that differentiates the, the whole scene is we have some very, very impressive educated people with PhDs and published research papers and we have people uh, without bachelor's degrees that work side by side. Our production manager of, of movies and TV shows, he is a, a production manager of an Oscar-nominated movie of 2016. He works um, with a 20, 21-year-old who actually have never done any movies, so it's a very diverse team. But one thing that they all share, and it's in common, it's actually grit. Um, you can see a Saturday, Sunday, sleeping in the office, pulling 12, 14 hours a day, and that's what makes a difference. Thank you.